greeting once more in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are grateful to God that today marks a very important day again in the calendar of Christendom. This day is the day of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember, as he was going on preaching to people, he was telling them that he's going to rise again on the third day. And people did not even believe it. At some time, he was even accused of wanting to destroy the temple. But at that time, they did not understand. He was not talking about the physical temple, but he was talking about his own body. That he will destroy this temple and he will lift it up or raise it up again on the third day. Let's read from the book of Luke chapter 24. We are going to read just from verse 1 through to verse 5. It says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre and bringing some spices. Now this is Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and all the others. They came to come and embalm the body and put some spices on it for it to keep on smelling good. And the Bible says, which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher and they entered in and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by in uh, uh, stood by them in shining garment and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth they said unto them why seek ye the living among the dead he is not here but he is risen remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet with you in galilee saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful man and be crucified and on the third day he shall rise again and they remembered his word now jesus christ remember has been crucified he has been killed and jesus christ was at this time risen from the dead but as human as we are they had forgotten that Jesus taught them about how he was going to suffer many things, how he was going to suffer the embarrassment, how he was going to suffer at the hand of the evil people. And at this time, the Bible says before the, 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 um, uh, the Good Friday, which we call Good Friday today, before he was buried, that's the time they left. Now, on, Mon on Sunday in the morning, they wanted to go there to go and cleanse his body and to wash his body. And when they arrived, they found something that they could not understand. The stone had been rolled away. I wonder how many stones need to be rolled away in your heart. I don't know how many stones need to be removed in order for you to can be able to realize that Jesus Christ was sent by God. I don't know how many stones need to be rolled away for you to see the miracle of God in your life. So the Bible says they were perplexed when they see that the stone has been rolled away. And when they were just trying around maybe to understand what is wrong. In the book of Matthew it says when they, when they saw that the stone is rolled away, they began to see this man and they thought he was a gardener. They thought this man was a gardener. They said, sir, where have you laid him? Where have you taken our master? You see, sometimes as the people of God, we forget the truth of the word of God and the things that God tells us. And we want to ask around from the people when we don't remember. We think that other people have got more, better, and greater revelation than we are. So they ask this man, where have you laid him? Where have you laid him? But here in the book of Luke, it tells us something very special. It says there were two men who were sitting on that rock. The very rock that was closing the sepulchre or the, do, the, the tomb that was uh, 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 dark of the mountain. 
The Bible says all of a sudden, these men said to them, I like it when it says, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek the living among the dead? This is a very critical question. It's a question to you and to me that why do we still think that Jesus is dead? Why don't we remember that he is alive? Why don't we remember that he said, I am the resurrection and the life? Why don't we remember that Jesus Christ can never be kept in the grave? Why don't we remember that the life in him is greater than death? The life in him is greater than the grave. The life in him is greater than all that the enemy can do in a person's life. So the Bible says the two angels, these were angels, ask them, why do you seek the living among the dead? This question needs to be answered by all of us. Some of us, our faith has left us. Some of us have backslidden, just like the man who when Jesus was risen from the dead. The Bible says they were walking along the shore. As they were walking along the shore, Jesus came and joined them. And as he was speaking, they could not recognize his face. They could not recognize his voice. They could not recognize the way he was talking to them, that it is him. And all of a sudden, they said to him, what is wrong with you? Are you the only one who doesn't know about the Galilean who has died? Are you the only one who does not know about this man who kept on saying he's a king that has been killed and been brutally murdered by the people? Are you the only one? The Bible says as he revealed the word to them, they still could not understand. But very soon he was taken away from them. When he was taken away from them, they said, ah, why is it that we could not behave, have our hearts being warmed up? Why is it that your heart is not warmed up by the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Why is it that your heart is not warmed up to the truth of the word of God? Why is it that your life is not turned around and touched by the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Resurrection of Jesus Christ qualifies us, number one, to be born again. We could have never been born again without Jesus Christ dying, being buried, and being raised from the dead. That's why the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter uh, 10, verse 9, it says, If you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and believe that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And it says, With the heart we believe and with the mouth we confess. This is the truth. The truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Make sure that we and you, we can pray to God and God can come into our life. The resurrection of Jesus Christ qualifies us to be born again. Number two, the resurrection of Jesus Christ qualifies us that our answers will be answered, our prayers will be answered. Jesus Christ said, when you ask the Father in my name, when you ask the Father, in my name, your prayers will be answered. He says, it shall be done unto you. It shall be done for you. God himself says, I will do it for you. Realize that the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees an answered prayer to you and in your life. The resurrection of Jesus Christ announces to the world that he, is, he has the power in heaven and in earth. That's what he said into them, unto them, when he was with them in that last, last, last supper. When he was partaking with them after his resurrection, he walked through the wall, which shows that, that he has no limitation. And he has no limitations even in your life. He can walk into your life. He can come into your life. He can come into the affairs of your life. He walks through the wall. He sat down with them. And they all of a sudden were scared. But Jesus Christ encouraged them. He even encouraged Thomas to touch him on his hand and to touch him on his side. To see that for a fact, it is he who has, was dead and now was alive. Let me tell you something. Much as you have doubts, God is still willing to meet you in those doubts and to be able to confirm to you that it is he.
So he confirmed unto Thomas that it was him. He showed him that he has risen from the dead, just like he said to them. And at that time, he began to partake of the Passover with them. And they began to eat, and they began to drink with him. And he said, I will no longer drink of this cup of, of, of communion with you until I do it again at, in heaven at the last time. Now, Jesus Christ was also proclaiming to them that he's going to come for the second time. But the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ was attesting to the fact that miracles are possible in their life. Him walking through the world, him sitting down with them, him giving them food that they did not even look for. The Bible in the book of John, it tells us that as they were fishing, Jesus Christ, the Bible says, he fished. When they fished, he began to say to them, come and feast with me. He gave them a fish, not from among those that he has given them into the net. Not from among those that he has provided for them. That's why Peter wanted to go away from the Lord, because he was seeing a person who could do something that could never be done. And we, as a people of God, have got to understand that the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees us our miracle. Number four, the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees us that we will also go to heaven. In John chapter 14, Jesus Christ said to them, when I go away, I will go and prepare a place for you. We know that when he rose from the dead, he went first to the Father. I remember when Mary saw him, that he's risen from the dead. He tried, she tried to go and grab him. But Jesus Christ says, no, don't touch me. I must first go to the Father. And Hebrews chapter 10 explains to us what was he doing there. He was going to bear the testimony with his own blood before the Father and say, it is paid in full. The sins of the world have been paid for in full. It became a witness. And remember, in the book of Leviticus chapter 16, it says, Aaron the priest will have to sprinkle the blood on the altar. Jesus, I believe, had gone to sprinkle the blood upon the altar of heaven to testify that truly what God wanted has been fulfilled. Number five, the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees us that as we walk here on earth, we also belong to another kingdom. That God is with us. Remember, his name was called Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. So as they were walking here on earth, Jesus Christ being in heaven, the Bible says in the book of Matthew, in the book of Mark, sorry, Mark chapter 16, verse 20, Jesus Christ, as he has commanded them to go into all the world and preach the gospel, he was working with them. It means now Jesus had no limitation of where he would be. But Jesus Christ had taken the omnipotence, has taken them the, the omnipresence, and he was walking with them and working miracles together with them. And this is a testimony for each and every one of us that the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees that God is going to work with us wherever we are. God will never be limited to one geographic area. God will never be limited to one continent. He can be in all places at all times. Hallelujah. Number six, the resurrection of Jesus Christ was guaranteeing that the power of God is working on earth. The Bible says the kingdoms of this world shall be turned into the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Remember when Jesus Christ was teaching the disciples that when they pray, they should say, your kingdom come. This time, the kingdom can come because it can come in every area. It can be in every area. That's why the Bible says it is God's fathers. It is God's fathers desire to give us the kingdom. Wherever you are, you are able to express the coming of the kingdom of God. Wherever you are, you are able to show forth the coming of the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ said to the people that when I cast out a demon in the power with the finger of God, know that the kingdom of God is with you. But he had told the disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He has given them power 
to heal the sick and to do all the different types of miracles. So me and you, when we cast out demons wherever we are, we are bringing the kingdom of God. Somebody can be bringing the kingdom of God in Canada. Another one can be bringing the kingdom of God in USA. Another one will be bringing the kingdom of God in Zimbabwe. The other one will be bringing the kingdom of God in India. There is no more limitation as to what God can express through Jesus Christ as he is working through our life. Hallelujah. I'm praying that you should come to that point of not looking for the one who is arrived and looking for him in the grave. Look for him in your own heart. Look for him in your own life. Look for him that he is working with you, that he is working with you, that he is doing miracles through you. Look at him and declare that the resurrection of Jesus Christ has brought oneness with me. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has brought the greatness of God in me. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has brought the greatness of God through me. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is very important to us as the children of God because it shows that he is different from all other leaders. All other leaders, you can go back to their tomb and you will find them there. All other leaders no matter how strong they believe, you can still go and see the, uh, the Muslims, they go every time on their mission or on their pilgrimage to Mecca. And when they go there, they go and they see the tomb of Muhammad. And the tomb of Muhammad still has the bones. And they still, even today, there is a day when they throw stones at that tomb. And they say they are throwing at the devil. They are throwing stones at the devil. It means they are frustrated that the one that they consider their leader is dead and can still be found in the Christians from all over the world, even historians, even uh, uh, anthropologists, even all other people who want to study the life of Jesus Christ, they still go to the tomb and they find it empty because Jesus Christ has risen. This, has risen. this gives us hope. Paul says, if Jesus didn't arise again, then our salvation would be in vain. I pray that your faith will not be vain, in vain. I pray that your faith will be solidified by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is not here. He is risen. And the Bible says that the, 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 the angels began to tell them about what he said to them, that he will rise again on the third day. I like it in the book of Matthew. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, when he rose from the dead, the stone was rolled. The Bible says those who were set up to guard the tomb, to make sure that the disciples do not say. The Bible says they fell as those who were dead. They could not stand the glory of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you that there is glory in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you know the manifestation of Jesus Christ and his glory and the resurrection and his power, you will understand that there's so much glory in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you understand that Jesus Christ is alive, is risen in your own life, Life, you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. I'm here to pray with you that wherever you are, that Christ may be risen in your own heart. Christ may be risen in your own life. Christ may be risen in your own faith. Christ may be risen in your own church. Christ may be risen in your own home. That is the prayer of my heart. Remember, Luke chapter 19 verse 10. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. I don't know what is it that was lost in your own life. He's there to seek it. I don't know what is it that is, has, has fled away from you. He is risen. I don't know what is it. Maybe you're calling pastor. You are no longer serving God. You are no longer working with God. God has come to raise that. God has come to seek and to save that. Some of you have lost your anointing. God has come to seek and to and to has gone has come to seek and to save that anointing which has been lost in your life. It is time you believe once more in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ will come with his power in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray.
Extend your loving kindness, your mercy, your grace, your peace upon each and every one of us to have an understanding and a revelation of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That because he is risen, our prayers can be answered. Because he is risen, the glory of God can be manifested in us. Because he is risen, we can believe and trust in a true God. Because he is risen, we can see the work of God in and through our life. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, touch even that man of God who has backslidden, that woman of God who has backslidden, that they remember that he is not among the dead. Why do we seek the living among the dead? He's alive, and he's alive forevermore. Jesus Christ said, said himself that I am he who was dead and was buried, and now I'm alive and alive forevermore. May Jesus be alive in us every day of our life. I pray, Father God, for the resurrection of the faith of people, for the resurrection of the greatness of the people. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like you to contact us with all the contact details that we are showing there. And also, most, uh, most importantly, download the app. It's free of charge. Download the app, and then you can be able to view as many messages of us and other men of God as possible. Just download it. There are telephone numbers. There are Facebook pages and so forth. Do that, and God will richly, richly bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.